So this is my first attempt at this, and it's something I've been trying to plan for quite a while. And it's just basically what I think would make a certain game better. And for, for this video, I chose Dragon Ball Fighters because I feel it could be a lot better than what it is. In fact, I think that the game, I think that Dragon Ball Fighters only really sells because it has Dragon Ball in its name. It has Dragon Ball, it has Dragon Ball in its name, and it has Goku in the game. I feel like that's the only reason why the game sells. <laughs> if it didn't have those two things, yeah, I think. Like, if it was called something completely different, like, Wolf Combat, whatever, and it had some random rabbit character, it probably wouldn't sell. <laughs> it'd, probably have, it'd probably be like this niche audience thing. <laughs> and only a few people would discover it saying, like, oh, it's just like, oh, it plays like Marvel. But it's not like Marvel. I think that's how it would be. And that's... But that's just my that's my opinion on it. Anyway, what I think can make this better. There's a number of things that can make this better. Now, obviously, the obviously the first thing that would come to anyone's mind that, well, pretty much plays a fighting game these days is better netcode or really let's just say better online, like just a better online infrastructure. Like just redo everything online from matchmaking to netcode to everything just just redo everything cuz all it is like all like all Dragon Ball Fighters really is is just once you jump in the game once you actually jump in the game like you're just thrown into a lobby <laughs> like that's all it really is it's like you're th like hey this is this is the lobby <laughs> it's like you just logged in the fantasy star online with I, with a bunch of people, with a bunch of people either there or you logged in offline, and there's nobody there except for like the little CPU AI models that say hi. How can I help? That are like hi. How can I help you? This is the this is the counter for this thing. <laughs> I don't really care for this online lobby thing because all a hey, you're just looking at a bunch of little avatars that. Are essentially just standing in place while they play rank matches or player matches, or they're sitting in the training room. That you like, you might see some over in the arcade, like in playing the arcade. But I don't think you really see anyone over at sto on the at the story side, or you don't really see anyone standing like standing like in the in the arena match. Like you don't really see people in certain areas. Like it just feels like it. It feels like I've gone to, I've gone to a convention and there's just a bunch of people standing around talking or waiting to, like to get their autograph, get an autograph from someone. That's really all it feels like. And I feel like this odd man out because of like, oh man, I don't really want to go there. There's a huge crowd there. And that that's how it feels. I mean, just just I. If we're gonna go with the online, just like fix everything. I don't care. Like, I don't really care for the lobby. That like, that can stay or that can go. I don't care for it. But fix like you got it. Like fix the net code. Fix matchmaking. And there's a there's a huge talk from various people about like yeah, they need to fix matchmaking. They need to fix net code, which. Apparently, GGPO is the best netcode out there, and then fits ma fix matchmaking. I don't know any. I don't really know anything about all of that. For me, when it comes to online, I just want to jump in and go. Like I just jump. Like really, I just jump in and go. I don't really care about how long I wait. I just go in. Play. play. I have a set time limit as to what I want to do, as to what I want to play, or how many matches I want to play. I get that. Once that's done, I'm out. So I'm not the person to talk to when it comes to online stuff. All I can say is just make it better. <laughs> like if you want to know how to make it better or specifically how to make it better, there's guys like there's guys around like Maximilian Dude or 
Um, Sand Jam. Like so many people that will like talk about this at length about how to go about fixing it. I'm not the person to talk to about that. For me, I would say make the game more friendly to people that play offline. Yes, I know that in terms of fighting games, pretty much anyone and everybody wants to jump online (laughs) immediately. I'm not one of those people. I like to take my time and enjoy what's in the offline areas. I want to enjoy what's out. I want to enjoy all the other stuff. And hey, maybe if I get and to be honest, I'd rather start offline before I jump online and then get my butt kicked. Because I don't like. I kind of want to feel a bit. I want. I want to just. I want to. If I'm going online, I want to jump online and feel a bit more confident. In terms of my skills, before I go out there and just get my butt handed to me, it's like, oh, I'm gonna jump in. I know absolutely nothing about this game. Ah, oh, well, I shouldn't have done that, and now I feel even worse. And I shouldn't have played this game. That's how I feel if I jump in immediately. But if I have a little bit of confidence, at least I can be like, okay, now I fit, now I know a little bit more about this game. Dragon Ball Fighters does not give me the feeling of being friendly to an offline player. It just says like, "Oh, why are you playing offline? You should be good. you should be online." Like, dude, look, everyone here is online. You should be with them. And there's reasons why I feel it's hostile to offline players. First off, tutorial mode is uh the, tuto- the tutorial mode, it's like, oh, yes, we have a tutorial mode. It's basically, that's basically all it is. It's like, hey, we have a tutorial mode. <laughs> this is, this button does this. This button does this. This button does this. Oh, and if you press this combination of buttons, you can do this. It doesn't really, it teaches you the base, it teaches you the most basic commands that you can ever think of. And really, those basic commands would be what's what you can find in an instruction manual, or what you can figure out within like five to ten minutes of playtime. <laughs> it's not a, it's not really a tutorial. It's just saying, hey, this is like it's really the basic of tutorials. Like, oh, well, this is how you move forward. This is how you move back. This is how you punch. This is how you kick. This is how you throw a fireball. This is how you do supers. It doesn't really get advanced. And my problem with the tutorial is that it teaches you a lot of these skills and it doesn't really teach you the importance of these skills or it doesn't te- and it doesn't teach you like when you should be utilizing these skills. It doesn't even bother to really teach you all of the skills that a lot of mechanics do. Like it, like it never. It doesn't bother to teach you like, oh, when should I be reflecting projectiles, or when should I be using reflect, which also counts as pushback, so I can push my opponent away, or when I should be using dragon rush, or when I should be doing super dash. It doesn't really explain when I should be doing this, and it doesn't explain the ins and outs of these things. It just says, oh, this is a thing. And then even more so, it doesn't bother to teach you like, oh, well, this is what, like, these are other things that you should know about this command. Like, it doesn't bother to teach you that sparking also lets you do, like, do a vanish without doing the actual attack. It doesn't doesn't teach you that, oh, while during vanish, you're, like, it doesn't really teach you the stuff that you should know, like, what sparking does. It doesn't teach you, like, oh, well, this is how you get the dragon balls. It doesn't bother. It doesn't care. <laughs> like especially during the especially during the Dragon Ball tutorial, it just tells you, "Oh, get the two get the two star ball." Well, how do I do get the two star ball? Get the two star ball. By, like if you press the help, if you press help on this, it will tell you 
get the two star ball, you can usually get this by doing a ten hit combo. Okay. Well, I'm gonna try and do a ten hit combo, I guess. It doesn't tell like it it it, it just lists everything and it doesn't bother to tell you. And I'm gonna have to compare it to stuff like Blade I'm gonna have to compare it to like Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, Undernight Inbirth X Latis ST. Because Undernight Inbirth X Late didn't have didn't really have a tutorial mode. Or Skullgirls. All of these games had extensive tutorials in the game. And even bothered to say, like, oh, this is the ins and outs of what you're doing. As, like, be careful about overusing this thing. So, essentially, it's telling, so, essentially, Dragon Ball Fighters is throwing you to the wolves with its tutorial modes. It just tells you, hey, this is a thing. (laughs) Okay, um, go to town. If I was to compare it, like, I guess I would say the tutorial mode is essentially the Dragon Ball Z anime. Because I could com- easily compare that to the ep- the episodes, or heck, the arc in certain cases, where Piccolo takes Gohan as a kid who's basically like a four or five year old kid, throws him into a mountain and says like, hey, do this thing. <laughs> and heck, just trains him like, go survive. Like, hey, go survive. You'll learn to fight that way. Yeah, that's not really, that's not really going to teach anyone to fight. <laughs> that's not really, like you're not you're not really gonna get the desired results doing that. But I guess I but I guess I'm wrong because there's so many other players that already get it. But maybe I'm not wrong because I think those players actually just go online and read everything that the game has to offer. <laughs> like they go like they'll go to a wiki, they'll go to a Re- they'll go to reddit, they'll go to youtube. They'll go everywhere else just to figure out like, oh, well this is what I should be doing for this game. If the game's not I feel like if the game's not going to bother to teach you, then why should I bother even even learning anything? <laughs> like why is it, like you're just ba- like it's basically just telling me this is a thing. Okay. Bye. <laughs> and if you go to like now, you could say that oh, the combo challenges will teach you how to play the game better, so you can learn combos. Not really. If you go through, if you go into combo challenges, I would say one to I would say challenges one to six, or one to seven, are pretty much just push one button. Or do this simple command. And then like 8, 9, and 10 are actual combos. Not exactly optimized. But at least they're doable to an extent. And then there's some of them that are just like, what the heck? Like, why would I throw this into the combo? <laughs> like, with, like, a lot of people, like, if a lot of people actually examine the combo inputs for them, it's just like, okay, why would I throw this into a combo? Like, why would I throw this single button into a combo. Like when that actually look and they'll be like and those people will be like, oh well this actually lowers the damage of my combo when I can just go this route instead. It's much easier it's much easier to execute and I get more damage out of it. It's like and I'm in a better situation. Not but who get but in that regard? But well, I mean, I don't think there's really any combo challenge out there that actually can t- that can act- that actually really teaches you legit combos. I guess Blaze Blue and Undernight, well, Uniel does, which is Undernight and Birth X latest, no well, X late, this, but I don't really see it. I, in that regard, I'd rather learn my combos on my own because clearly the play the human player can come up with come up with much better stuff than 
what the game has came, what the game developer has decided to put into the game, which I maybe I'm being a little too harsh in that regard because maybe that's like oh maybe it's supposed to be like oh well use this as your template to figure out how to do much better combos. So I guess I can give combo challenges a pass, but really. In terms of fighting games, I would rather have, like, some actual challenges. Not, can you do this combo that's listed here? Like, can you press this series of buttons that's listed here? Nah, eh, eh. I would rather have, like, actual challenges, like, face down your opponent who has, like, who has, like, seven meter and, like, two sparkings. And you only have, like, 50% health. Like you only have fifty percent health. I would rather have stuff like that, or like face down, like face down your opponent, like or like block your opponent, like block all your opponent's attacks with this, like like block all your opponent's attacks, or use this character that you like using to avoid this attack <laughs> or defeat your opponent. Like I would rather play with those type of situations rather than. Press this series. Press this magic series of buttons. I feel I learn a lot more than just do whatever combo. <sighs> so another thing that they needed. Another thing I rather they they not do their story mode. That story mode is oh, that story mode is incredibly boring. And it makes me realize why a lot of people decided, you know what, I'll just buy the season pass. Because the only real reason why you play story mode, the only real reason why people a lot of people have played story mode or why a lot of people have played it is because one if you don't, if you never bought the day one edition of Dragon Ball Fighters, or you never bought the season pass, you do not have Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and Super Saiyan Blue Goku at the start. You have to unlock them, and there's only two ways to unlock them. Both of them are pretty atrocious, by the way. The first one is by running through arcade mode and hoping that you beat the crap out of them in the in the hardest difficulty of arcade mode. Good luck with that, because the AI doesn't play, AI doesn't really like to play fair. The second way is to earn a set amount of money, and hope that well, earn a set amount of money. I think it was like three hundred million or something, like three million or something. Zenny, I don't know. I can't remember the exact amount because it's been such a while. It's been well over a year. Which the fastest way, like ironically, the fastest way to do it is either play rank matches to the death, or just play story mode and go all the way through, and you'll have, like, you'll pretty much come out almost near enough to unlock both characters. But also, you're playing story mode just to unlock Android Twenty One, which. If you bought the season pass, you got Android 21. But you can't buy Android 21 individually. Why? Anyway, the story mode is still a snooze fest. The, I was like the entire time I was watching the story mode of Dragon Ball Fighters, like when I saw it in the when I saw it on trailers, I was sitting there hoping, like, okay, well, this is by Arc System Works. This should be pretty dang good. Because Arc System Works has done decent story modes. And I was hoping that it was going to be like an individual character story mode or whatever. Like, and all I have to do is just like, okay, well, I'll just beat this. I'll just beat story mode with each and every character. I was hoping it was going to be like, okay, play as each and every character individually in story mode. And then once you do that, you go to the final, which is like versus the boss of versus boss android 21 boom you did that now you unlocked her congratulations no instead it's sit for like 
what three hours going through going through various fights against against the same characters over and over and over again with di- with dialogue that once you heard it the first time you never really want to hear it the second time and in a lot of cases like haha that's funny or haha oh that's like oh that's genius writing and then after you like at, like once you hear it again like you just don't want to hear it a second time you really don't at least i don't It was like, especially, and this was especially thanks to the many people that spoiled the story mode day one, or heck, almost even before day one in certain cases. Yeah, I yeah, you can argue like, oh, well, it's your fault for watching it. But who's not going to watch that stuff? Like... There's like there's tons of people who are just gonna immediately watch it because they want to see the content. They want to see everything it has to offer. And it's not like and it's not like the company did not make an effort to stop to like stop people from spoiling the story mode because hey, the the general way of recording that. <laughs> that the companies can only do is like through your console. They don't really know, like, they can't really do anything to stop people from using capture cards from recording story mode. Except just go around and ban every single person. Well, even that's a chore. Like, once the damage is done, they, there's you can't really recover off of it. <laughs> anyway, the story mode is still a snooze fest. Like I, I sat there. I watched the dialogue, and I just went, "What? Like, you know, I don't really care." Especially, my one thing that I hate about fighting game story modes, and a lot of games do it, especially nowadays, is force you to use characters you don't really care to play as, that like you don't want to play as. I was immediately disappointed when Beerus was not going to be available to use in story mode. And yeah, they gave you a story mode reason as to why he's not playable. And I was like, I really only wanted to play this game so I could play as Beerus. And now I can't play as him because he said no. (laughs) Which in the... In a funny haha sense, that could be, oh, well, Beerus does like Beerus said this story mode is crappy and he doesn't want to be involved in it whatsoever. He's only going to make cameo appearances. <laughs> but really, I was already disappointed. I was just like, wow, there's no point in me put like, wow, I don't really want to play story mode now, but I'm going to do it just so I can get Android 21 because this is the only way I can do it without paying extra money. Oh, so I ended up at, and then to make it even worse, I had to play as characters I did not, I had no, really no intention of using three times over. Like you, you essentially repeat the same story mode three times minimum just to unlock Android 21. What can, like, Why? And the only real thing that you did was just slightly change the story. We already know like what was going, how it was going to play out after the first time. I hate fighting. I hate fighting game story modes that do that. But that seems to be the st- that seems to be the gold standard now of fighting game story modes is to have this cinematic story mode and essentially give you little to no choice as to what. As to what character you're going to use in that story mode. <laughs> like you are stuck playing as that character in story mode. And you are going to like it. I will say at least. Those at, at least those other games. A certain few other games. Like at 
can at least make it easier on you by either allowing you to skip or just giving you an easier time with it. Dragon Ball Fighters, uh uh-uh. You're going to play as characters you don't want to use and you're going to enjoy it. (laughs) So yeah, that's story mode. Like, what ha- like, I'd rather just have like an individual character story mode that it doesn't even have to be like super long. Like you can just say, and then just get to the end. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'm still playing as characters I don't really want to use, but at least it's in short burst instead of a long winded story. <laughs> that's what that's. What I ended up really enjoy that's what I ended up really enjoyed about Blaze Blue, Calamity Trigger, Continuum Shift, Continuum Shift Extend, because Chrono Phantasma and anything onward changed from that. I got to see individual character stories, and yes, they were long, but I got to know a lot more about the character. I got to know a heck of a lot more about the character, and I enjoyed that a lot more than I would just Oh, well, it's this character's turn to fight. Get to it. (sighs) Next thing, arcade mode. What the heck were you thinking? Like, what the heck were they thinking when they made this arcade mode? A lot of people will say, like, oh, well, the AI is always horrible in like, when you're fighting against it. And they always know your buttons, and they're always unfair and cheap. Yeah, but this is not what I want. Like, this is not what I want in terms of an arcade mode. I don't care if the, I don't care if the AI is going to sit there and block everything I, block everything I dish out. They're going to eventually stop blocking at some point, and I'd rather deal with that than what this game does. This game basically says, okay, you know what? We're not going to block everything. Instead, we're going to randomly read your button and then counter you with a combo that will essentially kill your character. Because what they ended up doing is strengthening their character to absurd levels. I didn't think I was playing. I didn't think I was playing like Unlimited Mars, or so. Sur- I didn't think I was playing Unlimited Mars or Survival Mode or some other random fighting game mode. I thought I was playing arcade. It's rather ridiculous, and it's rather ridiculous that you get like that you lose so much life, especially in the final set of matches. For getting hit by one super. And it's not even a level 3. That, like, that, that makes no sense. To me that makes no sense at all. I would understand it if it was like. Oh well this is Blaze Blue Unlimited Mars mode. Or oh this is. The, this is the Blaze Blue secret boss character. And yes I have to compare Blaze Blue. Well, okay let's go to King of Fighters. Like oh this is the King of Fighters boss character. But this is this isn't even SNK boss syndrome. At least with those, I can enjoy it because like, oh wow, like this character's really going ham and they're doing things that could like literally that is just like wow. It makes it makes you frustrated, but you eventually catch on to what they're doing and how to avoid it. Yes, you yes, you're forced to play in a way that's not recommended for the fighting game. Like San, like Samurai Showdown where oh, I need to you start using this mechanic that is not recommended, but hey, I'm going to use it because the AI will fall for it on this one boss stage. Same with King of Fighters. Like, oh, I should not be spamming roll as much as I do. But for this boss, I will do it. Because that's what is defeating this boss. Heck, like, go for like, it doesn't, like, it makes, to me it makes no sense because it's like, why would you make your character absurdly strong? Like, it's not, like, it's not story mode. 
It's not this. It's not the game story mode. It's just we'll make the characters super strong and make you super weak. I like, and I hate this. I hate this thing, this way of thinking. Whoever designed that, wow. Like I would rather go back to playing old Capcom fighters, or heck, just a Capcom fighter in general, where the AI just essentially blocked everything. At least they, at least that AI will eventually stop blocking. They'll eventually stop blocking, or heck, at least they'll fall. At least something will eventually work. This is just, this is, like, to me, I think this is, like, the first time I've ever experienced this. Heck, I'd rather, like, if I was to give a good AI, good AI to fight against, Psychic Force 2012, Psychic Force 2012 had had good AI, (laughs) well, pretty decent AI. Once you got to the late, once you got to the late stages, like they, like they fought back. They did legit combos. This is, they do the simplest thing ever, and you die for it. Another fighting game. Like, it's the most. It honestly is the most annoying thing ever. And then to make it worse for arcade mode. There are no rewards for it. There's no real reward for it except, oh, you just earned Zenny to buy more unlockable stuff that you're probably not even going to use. I don't like you don't get it like you don't get end credits, you don't get an like you don't get an ending, you just get a congratulations, you beat arcade mode. You don't even get to see your you don't even really get to see your characters like do some epic pose or whatever at the end with like congratulations like you just like it's just like oh hey you finished arcade mode you're done congrats bye or like would you like to try again no I wouldn't no I would not want to try that again <laughs> I'll be I'm being frank with you I don't want to try it again I don't want to go back to this ever but it's like literally the only it's literally like the only other offline mode only other of three offline modes you have, essentially. Like, you have training, and I count the combo challenges along with training. You have story mode. Oh, wait, four. You have training, you have story mode, you have single player mode or versus, which you can either verse the AI or verse another opponent that is, that lives near, that lives near you, or really just you use that thing for tournaments. And then you have arcade. Nothing really to do for offline. You really have nothing much to do offline except sit in the lab all day, sit in the lab mo sit in the lab for and train all day. Oh like oh experiment like hear the ra- hear the random dialogue that the that the developers put a lot of effort into, and I'll give them that they put a lot of effort into the di- into the dialogue between characters and the victor and the win quotes. But they didn't really put much else into. They didn't really put much else in there. A. Like after I played after I played arcade mode the first couple of times, I just felt like if I kept going any further with the difficulty or just kept going, like just kept playing in general, I felt like I was messing with a bunch of rabid dogs that were going to eat me. <laughs> like they were, <laughs> I did not like. I just did not want to go back there ever again because there's no reward for it. There's no real reward for it. It's just hey. And that's because they really just want to steer you to playing online. But 
like I said a while back on this video, I don't want to play, like, I don't really want to play online just yet. I want to make sure I get confident enough to play online. So, I can go in there with more confidence than normal, while well, with, I can go in there with actual confidence instead of just going, oh crap, I'm going in online, I'm so nervous, I, I don't know what but uh, oh crap, oh crap, I already lost. That they, they really should add some more offline modes, offline modes, or just make the offline modes that they have a lot better than what we got. Heck, if I'm, if I'm gonna give a comparison for arcade mode, like do like Marvel vs. Capcom, not like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, but heck, even that is better than Dragon Ball Fighters arcade mode, but. Hey, give us individual character endings. It's like, oh, this character be this character finished arcade mode. Like this character on the team finished arcade mode. Well, here you can view this ending. Hey, do like King of Fighters eleven, where you have like if you have a specific like specific teams has certain endings, like ha like has an ending tailored to them, and then if you even go further and start mixing and matching teams, you get a certain team together, you actually unlock stuff in the gallery. Like, you actually unlock stuff in gallery. There is, in Dragon Ball Fighters, there's essentially nothing to unlock. Like, everything you are unlocking in Dragon Ball Fighters is character colors. Like, it's character colors and lobby, like, lobby avatar, well, lobby avatar stuff and stuff to make your stuff to like make your card like your online card look better and it's and in reality like you don't like I don't really think too many people care too much about that like it's like oh like I have my lobby avatar neat and I forgot to mention that there is the I forgot to mention that there is a side room that they did add to the game. Like, you can just go, like, it's basically like your own little trophy room where you can just add stuff that you've unlocked, that you've managed to unlock. Like, oh, well, I did this, I did this at this tournament, well, this online tournament, and I did well, so I got this to show off to people. Do, do, does anyone even actually visit no, that thing? I went in there once, and I was done. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, this is boring, I'm gone. <laughs> the problem is that the rest of the modes are essentially online. Party battle mode, which, it's fun when you have friends. It's fun when you have friends and, like, you can, like, and essentially... The most I've seen of it is just like people acting a fool. It's, like, it, it's still it's pretty epic, but it's just like it's pretty like everyone just act, everyone pretty much acts a fool in there, and that's that's fun. Then you have the other party battle mode where you fight this super powerful boss. That's generally fun at times. It's generally fun at times until you have that which I'm gonna have to like go back to the online matchmaking again and heck just online fixing online in general that's fun until you have another player leave especially in the middle of the set like they left or they somehow got disconnected and now they're gone like like now like your entire room where you were doing that party battle it's a, like it's over you have to start back from the beginning like, oh, but I just got to the final stage in very hard. Well, 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 too bad. I gotta start over from stage one. And find two other people to play with. Like, you can't just... You can't do that mode by yourself. Which also sucks. Like, you can't do that mode solo. And for me, it's just like, okay, well, good luck finding people that actually want to play. Like, I have to pretty much just jump into a room of randoms and... Hey... 
to be honest, like nobody want like there's nobody really wanting a Beerus player on their team. There's nobody that not really anyone that wants a Beerus on their team. <laughs> At least from my experience, they like, I've gotten the like I can get a couple of matches, but then in reality, it's like nobody really wants Beerus, and I totally understand why. Like, I can totally understand why. And then it's like, oh, well, nobody really wants a white square. Nobody wants a green... Nobody wants a green square. Eh. Excuse me. Nobody wants a green square. <laughs> they want these guys that are, like... A lot of these people want somebody to just basically... Bum rush the whole thing by themselves. While you just while you just sit back and be like, oh well, let them play. They can do it. Oh, you beat it. Okay, good. I got my stuff. Bye. <laughs> there's so much more. Like, and even in terms of online, there's not a whole like there's not exactly a whole lot to do. It's like online, it's ranked, player matches, party battle, boss party battle. That's about it. And you don't really have much to do. And in comparison to other fighting games where that have single player modes, I'm like, wow, I can do a lot in this. Even in... Like, heck, even the most recent fighting game I'm playing, Fantasy Strike... That has a lot more to do offline than online. Like, yes, there's a bunch of survival modes, but you got an actual arcade mode that works. You have an arcade mode that works. You have, like, you have a training mode that needs work. You have, like, the offline play just works, on, I feel it works a lot better. Than Dragon Ball Fighters does. <sighs> hey, I would even have fun if I if I'm just unlocking like a picture gallery. If I'm just unlocking a simple picture gallery, like oh well, play as this character. Like you could just have that there and just be like oh well, play as this character a set number of times to unlock this picture. I would love to do something like that. That's something to do. That's something to do in my spare time. Like, oh, well, you should beat like beat arcade mode with this character on your team. Like, go play online with this character. I was like, I have no qualms against that. I don't really care for this. Hey, you just earned Zinni. Now go buy, now go to this random gotcha machine, gotcha machine or. But hey, on hey, and when I say gotcha, I mean online or mobile games. Go to the mobile game shop and just play and just do a random draw. You're not paying for it with actual money, so it's kind of not gotcha, but it is. And just like just go play online and go unlock this. Like and randomly unlock character colors and char and char and lobby characters and a bunch and titles and other stuff. You just go there and go unlock the stuff. Eh. I think if it for me if it was more friendly if I if there was more stuff to do offline I would be glad to play it online. I would be more than happy to just go and jump online. But there isn't. And the stuff that's and the stuff that's available offline has issues. Has one issue after another with it. And it's just and to me it just feels like, okay, I'm done for the day. Like I feel so exhausted after I play it. I'm just like, okay, I'm done. Like I don't want to do this anymore. I like I feel stress. Like I just feel stressed out after I'm done with it. 
and not the fun kind of stressed out like oh I can't wait to go back to tomorrow but more the this was boring I'm done <laughs> type of deal so anyway those are my thoughts of Dragon Ball Fighters. I actually been wanting to make this a long time and I actually wanted to do a lot more than just record my voice over it record my voice over it so it's probably not going to get a lot of views but this is this is just the start if I feel a lot better I might just go back and redo this and like give it some act like give it some actual flair anyway I Brad Rita gaming mole I will see you guys later. <laughs>